uh, welcome to Zelda and Chill. Uh, give me a couple of moments to explain to you what this is and uh, why it's different, why it's special, why I enjoy it and why I made it. Um, in order to do that, we're going to take a little bit of a time travel, uh, as is common in so many Zelda games, back to the year 2001. Uh, I'm a young lad. Uh, I have a Game Boy Color that's been given to me, I think in 1998, 99 maybe. My dad's not happy with it because it doesn't have a backlit screen. The Atari Lynx is far better, he says. Um, and he wasn't impressed at all with the amount of money he spent for the for the quality of the uh, of the console that he got. But I was determined to finish games like uh, Pokemon Red, Pokemon Gold, all those kind of things. But I never quite did. Um, I just wasn't quite a completionist at games. Uh, my brother, on the other hand, quite good at them. So I would sit over his shoulder and let him play and watch it and figure out how to do these things. Still couldn't do it. But I was ready to give it a shot. He played Zelda on Nintendo 64 and I managed to get myself a copy of this fantastic game The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages um, brand new and I actually you know I have everything here for it I've got the box I've got the cartridge and I've even got the manual and everything because I love to keep my stuff in good order because if I didn't surely it was going to get minced up by my siblings uh, <laughs> so I kept that all intact but because I wasn't necessarily much of a gamer I relied on things like the early internet and its walkthroughs um, to guide me through these games because I really had no idea what I was doing at um, such a young age. So I found this lovely thing, and let's switch to another view for this one because I, I'm, I'm really, I really want to show you this. I printed this out as a child, as a young man. I can say a child. I was like 12 or 13 or something like that. And I've gone on to the internet and I found this thing, and it looks all janky. Look, here's the manual here for the game. Um, Look at that. Beautiful. It's still like perfect, like barely a wrinkle on it. Oh, one wrinkle. Uh, <laughs> but it is like in gorgeous condition. And this walkthrough here, Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Ages, Frequently Asked Questions slash Walkthrough version 1.2, written by Shadow Realm and Astro Blue. Um, now, it's hilarious. The, the, the start of this is so funny. They they hang shit on people who um, plagiarize the content and who have copied it and put it on their websites without being without without asking permission and reproduce it in any way. That's why I won't show you too much of this. But there's so many funny moments in this one. Um, particularly, I don't know if you can read that, but that says "F you sincerely," the writer of this walkthrough. So I downloaded this and printed it out so I could put it in this book, which is the exact same book that I put it in all those years ago. And I didn't even get past uh, barely any of this, so uh, there was no way I was gonna was gonna go through this. We're gonna cut to many, many years later, the year two thousand and twenty-two, and I found well, not found. I always knew where all these things were, but uh, my original Game Boy, um, which I still have. Here, hang on, we'll go back to that over here. <laughs> in a Zelda case, which wasn't the actual one that I used, but when I decided to put it away, it's the one that I stored it in. But it has this thing, you know, like all over it there. And my original Game Boy Color is in perfect condition. This is the one that I received for that Christmas that year. And it is so cool. But the screen, as we discussed, is a little small and not backlit or anything like that. Um... So I turned to my favorite place in the world, Facebook Marketplace, and I managed to pick up a Game Boy Color um, that was in great condition, but like, you know, it was it was in okay condition enough to require a little bit of work to get it up to speed. So I went and bought myself a kit, an IPS kit, the Q5 IPS kit, and I really liked the DMG styling on that one. So I grabbed myself that and modified the Game Boy so that it has this gorgeous backlit screen and I'm like that's it I'm gonna do it I'm gonna finally play this game the way that it looks the way that it should be played and I want to enjoy this thoroughly and see it through I want to finally complete the task that I set myself at the age of 11 or 12 I wonder how 2001 I was born in 88 you guys work it out I'm no mathematician <laughs> so I I, I put this Game Boy together and I set myself a task, which was to um, finish the game. Uh, oh, sorry, there's one one minor detail here. It was, I found the walkthrough, that printed out walkthrough on a trip to my mum's house to just go and pick up a few things and look for games and Game Boys and, and all that kind of stuff. And I found that, that walkthrough in the blue folder. And that's when I said, I'm doing it, I'm going to get this thing sorted and I'm going to play this game. 
but my walkthrough was a little shabby. So I found the most latest updated version of that same walkthrough, um, which obviously had been through a few iterations since the 2001 version of it that had come out. And I made it a brand new nice little cover and printed it out on my work printer. So I made this part here and I've credited the original people here and I've it's 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 definitely technically they say you can only print one of these out per person. This is a second version so I've only got one version of the first one and this final version of the December 30th 2002 and it's got their ASCII out which you're not allowed to reproduce so don't look at that. Uh, important note plagiarism is no good. Plagiarists are very bad. Plagiarists get put into the naughty people list and will face the consequences. If you send an email we can't guarantee we'll answer it, but we can guarantee we won't answer it. <laughs> Just joking, sort of. Also, if you need to find something, try pressing Control F and type this. Now, that's an important part because this entire thing was a Word document, like, sorry, a Word Pad document, which is why ASCII art exists. So I went through this entire thing bit by bit, segment by segment, and I started to make notes and play these things in small sections, and then. I figured out I could film these things. I put my iPhone above, which is what you're looking at right now. My MacBook is in front of me. And I had to build myself a little stand. So I'm making all these notes. I'm getting all these things done. I'm drawing little parts here. I'm making this thing interesting for me as well. I'm, I'm copying puzzles down here. And I'm doing them in the order that I can... Excuse me, that I can process them in. So I'm I'm going through this this walkthrough here, and some of it is makes sense, but I did find there were different ways to do certain things in certain areas, not very many variances. But what you are going to see is my interpretation of this particular guide, the Astro Blue and Shadow Realm guide. And please don't sue me, guys. Um, you guys did the greatest walkthrough of any game walkthrough that I've ever done, and because I suck at games, I've done a couple of them now. Um, this was OG. I wanted to play this thing the way that I should have played it when I was a kid. The only difference is... No, no, I don't think it's a difference. I should have played it this way because I should have played it with a coloured, backlit Game Boy. Um, I really should have, and I really wish that it had come out at that time because the technology was there, but maybe it was just too hard to put into something small. So... Astro Blue, Shadow Realm, don't kill me. I'm sorry, but I'm also so thankful. I'm not reproducing your stuff here. I'm just showing people how I went through it. I'm just trying to chill out and play some Zelda, and that's helping me. That helped me a lot. That walkthrough helped me a lot. Zelda and chill, which is why it's called that. So in order to finish these games, I had to build myself a stand. I tried a few things. I tried those phone stands that go on your on your car window, and they just they all the snake necks, and they would go all over the place, and they would do 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 bouncing and bouncing, and it just didn't work until I came across this really really cool piece of steel that I had in the shed that I tried to make a guitar pedal out of years ago, and I'm like that's perfect. It's heavy. Um, I had tried an IKEA phone stand to suction something to it, and it just did not work. So I found this piece of steel. And I also found myself another phone stand. Now, I've only sucked this down once, and it has stayed there the entire time. So I cleaned off this little piece of metal. I put my phone stand down, and then I put the Game Boy, because it's got such a thick battery pack, directly in. And, bam. Oh, oh hang on, that's the first time it hasn't worked. Well, luckily, I've finished the, finished the walkthrough already. <laughs> and then I've got myself a happy little Game Boy stand that I could sit there and I could play my game on. And all I needed to do was make sure that my camera was set in the right way. So, I got my camera ready, I put it up there, and alas, no good. It was not the right angle, so I had to dial in the tilt and everything like that of the camera to try to get it right, and then I would get reflections and all this kind of stuff. So I had to figure out how to play this, light my own face, light my Game Boy so it didn't reflect off my face too much, keep it square on the screen, and try to get an audio feed at the same time. That's where I figured out, you know, I, I, I'm a former musician and a bass player and I have this amplifier that I can plug an auxiliary into, which was plugged into my computer at the time. So I just plugged the Game Boy into the amp and this is a different game, but <laughs> I plugged the Game Boy directly into the amplifier and then um, th it's a mono signal, so it just goes straight in and I managed to mix those two levels and get the sound of the Game Boy, the sound of my voice at the same time, and set up a little bit of an OBS session so that you can see everything. And the original version of that looked a little something like this. Now, as you can see, the camera's on a different angle, right? Because I had to turn <laughs> everything around, and I had it zoomed right into the screen, and one thing was a problem. Everything still moved around a lot like this because I was playing the game and I was doing a lot of this. So that's where Da Vinci came in. 
this um, program for editing where I had to cut the visuals down, track just the screen, stabilize it, and then put it back into the image on top of pictures of my own Game Boy that I was already playing on. So it was such a process to try to make this thing look okay. But I still believe that I've come away being the only person who's completed the, a game and filmed it on the original hardware, albeit modified hardware. Modified with a Q5 IPS screen and this lovely funny playing case. But I still think everyone else who's played it is playing it on an emulator of some description where I'm playing it on this hardware the entire time with the sound coming out of the bottom, batteries in too. Uh, <laughs> like literally, I went through, I only went through probably three and a half pairs of batteries to, to do this game. And it worked out just beautifully so um either way i really hope that you guys are going to enjoy this thing um i i worked really hard on it. i played the game through effectively two times um and that was to once to kind of play through on profile one to figure out hey uh, what do i have to actually do in this game let me get the hang of it let me see if i can pass it because i don't want to look like a total knob trying to go through these things yeah i'm a, I'm a noob but i didn't want to look like a complete absolute tosser trying to go through this stuff so I played it through once and then I'd go back through and I'd record that section of me playing it again a lot of the times I might not have I, I might have got an idea on how to do it and then just gone all right I'll chance it because I couldn't be stuff playing it through four times so you're getting mostly my genuine reaction to a lot of things especially in the earlier episodes but as it comes along later I figured out kind of a groove to this thing which was to figure out exactly how to film it and exactly how to re- how to um play the game effectively um, and that was just one of the most fun processes I've ever had and that includes going through this book um, and just annotating everything that I possibly could figuring out ways to get through um, places and also just looking up other little handy hints that other people had done and like gameplay tactics and stuff like that like it gives you an idea this does really leave a lot up to your imagination but eventually I developed a thing orange highlighter turns into um, directional uh yellow is things to look out for blue is items and pink is bosses and then here i just had a few things where it was like up down left right and i just code those and i did that whole thing with this lovely free set of highlighters that i got from a bose rep when i worked in the music industry which is a good time (laughs) and what a really cool thing and then when i went through to edit these i had to put through um, what type of, of objectives you're going to pass so that I can have those roll across the screen when I edited it. Um, really, really fun time. Oh, green means when you go between the past and the present. Um, and then I drew little pictures of items too just to kind of keep this thing interesting. Using these little tabs as well, I could put down um, bosses, little quick tabs there. So if I had a boss that I needed to get to, get to, I could just grab the bosses tab, move it, and then go and find the bosses. I'd tick them off as I'd go. Tick, 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 tick. When I'd beat them, um, obviously when I got up towards the end I didn't tick them off because it was the last boss but um, there it is that's that's what happened how good are binding machines I bound that one and I've also bound one for another game uh, that might be a red version of the same one called Oracle of Seasons with the plans to do that and that's pretty much it what a rant what a rave um, I'm really really excited to bring to you Zelda and Chill and the first rendition of that being the Oracle of Ages game um, I am so happy to be able to experience this. This is not necessarily nostalgia to me. As I've mentioned in a previous um, video with an explanation on this, this is all new experiences to me, and I really want to share with you guys um, those genuine experiences where I'm actually finding this stuff new. Um, it's an old game, yeah, it's a very old game. It's a 22-year-old game at this point, and it's still valuable and it's still new and it's still interesting and you can still bring back some of that that magic that you had when you were a kid I suppose even well even though you may not have experienced it you'll get that feeling again of um, the rage (laughs) the the fun the relaxation and the wonder of these beautiful beautiful games Um, people have divided opinions on these uh, particular Capcom Zelda games Um, but you know what everything has its value in itself Um, of itself and as its own thing even if they're bad doesn't have to mean that they're horrible um i think it's a it's a subjective matter but i really really had so much fun playing oracle of ages and i hope that you guys can get a little bit of that as well 
why do my people say I hope stuff on YouTube? I don't hope anything. <laughs> I just, I, I just, I enjoyed it, and all I'm doing is showing you how much I enjoyed it. If you enjoy that too, then that just means the world to me. Thank you all very much for coming along on this little fun journey. 18 parts of this, uh, enjoy that, and a few things in between as well. Thanks for checking out Zelda and Chill. Um, hopefully, you guys have a bit of a chill while we play. We'll see you then. Enjoy the series. Bye.